All right. Well, thank you, you everybody for joining us tonight. My name is Jordan Stotzenberger. I am the Blinn College Dual Credit Coordinator. Um, and I'm Shannon Wiggum. I am the Blinn College Dual Credit Advisor. Um, so we're going to go over the dual credit program. We know that there's people from all kinds of high schools here um, from all over our service area. So we're going to give you as much general information as you have as we can. Um, and if you have any additional questions specific to your school, you can always reach out to your high school counselor and they have the best information for that. Um, we are going to be recording this um, presentation just so that we can email it out in the future. <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go over is what dual credit is. Dual credit, it is a high school, um, it is a course that high school students take, but it is a college course. Um, this course allows you to earn high school credit and college credit for the same class. So what that means is you'll have a Blinn College instructor teaching the course, and then that course goes on your, the final grade goes on your permanent college transcript, and then it also satisfies a graduation requirement for your high school. These are some benefits to taking a dual credit class. The courses are transferable college hours. Um, so all of the courses that Blinn has on our core curricula, they must be accepted by any public college in the state of Texas. So if you plan on going to any public college in Texas, they have to accept these credits as transfer credits. If you do want to go to a private university or outside of the state of Texas, you would just need to reach out to admissions um, or an advisor, somebody there at that institution and see if it would transfer. Dual credit tuition rates are lower than a traditional student would pay. So one dual credit class um, for out of district is about $318. For Washington County residents, it's about $150. So you are getting a, um, a discount on the tuition fees. Dual credit students gain college experience before enrolling as a full-time student. So you are taking maybe one or two courses, um, college courses, as opposed to after you graduate high school and you go to um, a new campus and a new town um, and you're taking four to five courses. So you really just get the get to understand what a course a college course is, what the expectations are um, and how to navigate that without having a full course load. Our dual credit students are college students, are blend college students. So they have access to any of the Blinn College facilities, any student activities, athletic, theater, um, any event that a, dual, a traditional college student has access to, dual credit students also have access to that. Um, and you can access those with your Blinn College student ID. And then that Blinn College student ID also gets you local area business discounts. So any business that offers a student discount, um, movie theaters, sometimes restaurants have um, different discounts for students. You can access, you can receive those because you are a college student. Our dual credit students also receive all of the support services a traditional student would receive. So you have access to the library, both online, um, the online catalog, or if you would like to come to a Blend campus, you can access the library there. Um, we have computer labs on our campuses that you can access. There's the Writing Center, and the Writing Center um, has virtual and in-person options. So if you cannot make it to campus, you can always um, set up an appointment virtually with a, a Writing Center employee, and they will take you through the entire writing process. So they'll sit down with you. Um, if, if you're given a prompt and you're not sure what to do, they'll sit down with you and help you um, figure out how to brainstorm, how to um, revise and edit, and they'll even take take a final graded um, essay and go over it with you and see what you could do better in the future or what you did good. Um, and then the Learning Center, these this is tutoring services. The Learning Center also has in-person and online capabilities. And then we have dual credit advising services. Shannon Wiggum is our dual credit advisor. And so she specializes in helping our, our dual credit students um, with any transfer information, um, selecting majors, any advising questions you would have while you're still in high school taking dual credit classes, she's our specialty. Dual credit students um, also can utilize disability services. So if you have a 504 or accommodations in place at the high school, you would need to reach out to the disability service office 
um, and they would they would be the ones to set that up for you at the Blinn College. These are some examples of the appropriate documentation. Um, I would say to reach out to them as soon as possible after you've applied to Apply Texas and you're starting to get your dual credit paperwork turned in, go ahead and start the process for disability services so that they can get all of that documentation in before the first day of class or before that first final or first exam comes around so that you know you have you can utilize all of your accommodations. These are the contacts for disability services. And once you do have those accommodations in place, go ahead and email um, at the beginning of the semester, email your instructor and just let them know that you've gone through disability services and these are the accommodations you have in place so that they, so that you can make sure this, that they are aware of your accommodations. What about for Schoenlumber <laughs> campus? Um, you could reach out to any of those options um, and they would be able to help you. How to succeed. Um, the thing that we see our dual credit students struggle with the most is communication. Um, it is not like a high school course and a lot of times these courses are online and they don't have that face-to-face -face instructor. Um, so communication can be difficult for the student. Um, you will need to email the instructor with your Blend email address um, if you need help, if you have a question about an assignment or a due date, anything that you need clarity on. The student is responsible for communicating with the instructor. They are also responsible for communicating with their high school counselor and their parent. Um, the only person that can see final gra grades throughout the semester before grades are finalized are the students. So your, your counselors and your parents do not have a portal where they can track your grades throughout the semester. That's all on the student. So it's important for the student to keep parents and um, counselors in communication throughout the semester. Challenges, and these are college courses, so they are very demanding and the students are expected to perform at a collegiate level. So that includes the work that they submit and it also it includes um, submitting that work on time. So um, at the beginning of the semester, dual credit students or any college student will receive a course syllabus and that course syllabus, um, it lists out the entire semester. It tells you how much um, Different, court, different assignments are going to be weighted in the final grade. And it tells you normally about when they're going to be due. So it's the student's responsibility for keeping track of those due dates and deadlines and making sure that they have their paper um, written before it's due and also that they have studied for tests in advance. These courses require strong self-discipline and self-direction. Um, so just making sure that you are staying on top of due dates and deadlines and you are turning things in on time and also allowing yourself um, enough time to study for so if you have a um, if you have a game on Friday and um, you know you have a test on on that following Monday giving yourself enough time to study for that if you earn below a 70 you may not receive high school graduation credit for that course and this is different for each high school. Each ISD is going to have a policy in place for their dual credit student grades. Dual credit classes, um, your final grades impact your financial aid eligibility when you graduate high school. So every financial aid department is going to look at something called the satisfactory academic progress rate. And this is your GPA and how successful you were in, in previous college courses. So even though you are in high school still, the courses that um, you are taking and the grades that you are making are impacting your financial aid eligibility. The classes follow the Blinn College calendar. Um, so if for some reason the high school is out, but Blinn College is not out that day, you may be required to submit an assignment, take a test, or even if the class is in person, you may be um, required to show up in person for that class. These are some typical courses that our dual credit students take, History 1301 and 1302, English 1301 and 1302, 
um, in government and economics. Um, each ISD, they decide what they're going to offer as dual credit and what they will accept as dual credit. Um, so they vary from school to school. Some offer more, some offer different courses. And then each course will be taught during one semester. So if you do take histories, you'll take History 1301 during the fall um, normally, and then History 1302 during the spring. So each course you would have to pay um, at the beginning of that semester. So fall and spring, you would have that charge. And then grades, the student is responsible, like I said, for keeping track of the course syllabus and then keeping track of grades and informing parents throughout the semester. On the student's eCampus, which is their online um, course, they will have a grade book that they could show, show parents or even um, their counselors throughout the semester of how they're, how they're doing. If they do need to drop a course for some reason, they would need to contact their counselor as soon as possible um, before that drop date because our office registers and drops all, all dual credit students. So you do not have access to drop them, drop yourself. Um, it would have to go through our office and there is a form that needs to be completed before we can do that. So um, make sure that if you do believe you need to drop to communicate that with your counselor ahead of time. And then grades and bills are not mailed out. That's all located on, your, on the student's MyBlin account. FERPA, this is a federal law, and this is why it's so important for the student to communicate with parents. Um, it says that as soon as a student attends, the, attends a school beyond the high school level, they are the owner of their educational records. So parents, um, guardians, they cannot contact a Blinn employee um, about their grade or their um, if they paid for a course, if they're registered for a course. Blinn Blin employees cannot disclose that information to anyone except for the student or the high school because we have an educational partnership with that school. There is a FERPA release form. So if, if you do need more information about that, you can reach out to our office and we can provide you the information on how to get that started. These are the eligibility and steps to enroll. So the first thing to do is to apply through Apply Texas. This is a free application. Um, it's two parts. You will start, you will create an Apply Texas profile. And once you've created that, you will access the Blinn College application. You can start and finish um, that, that Blinn College application. You know you're completed with the application when you get confetti, um, but it is free. It does not have any essays, so it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, it takes about 15 to 30 minutes, just depending on how much information you have on hand. We will need a completed dual credit approval form. And depending on which school you attend and what, what your um, school offers, you will either have a paper form or, or an electronic approval form. Um, and this is completed by the student, the parent, and the high school. Um, it's just signing off saying that you have met the B average in all your completed coursework and that you are approved to take the dual credit classes. You will need to meet TSI requirements for eligibility. These are test scores um, and there's multiple different options that you can use for dual credit classes and I will show you those in a little bit. Um, and if you do come to a Blinn College campus in person, you would need to submit your bacterial meningitis shot vaccination um, so that we can have that on file before you come and attend. These are the electronic dual credit approval form steps. So if your school does not use the paper form, your counselor will provide you with a link um, or you can access the dual credit approval form through your MyBlin account on an icon called admissions forms. Um, it's student initiated, so you will start the form the student will put um, their parent name and email address. And once the student submits their section, the parent will, will um, get an email to create their Dynamic Forms account. Dynamic Forms is the company we use for our electronic form. Um, once you've created your account, you can access the student form and approve it, and then it goes straight to the counselor. So you don't have to worry about paper traveling um, home and back to the school. It goes straight to the counselor. Once the counselor approves it, it goes straight to Blend. 
So there's no, um, it, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't, you know, you won't lose it. So TSI scores, um, like Jordan was saying earlier, these are required for students. Um, these are the old TSI scores that we require, as well as the new TSI 2.0 scores. Um, what's nice with these scores is that you don't necessarily have to meet the math requirements if you're not planning to take a math class. So don't freak out if you don't meet those math requirements. As long as you're not planning to take a math class, that's okay. Um, you only have to meet those requirements if you're planning to take a math class. Um, any other class needs the English language arts and reading requirements or on the old scores, the reading and writing. Um, you do have to meet the multiple choice and the essay requirements. So these are also test scores that we can use for dual credit students. Um, they can be used as exemptions or waivers in place of those TSI scores. Um, the ACT, the SAT, PSAT, and then Algebra 1 and English 2 EOC scores. Um, it works the same way. Um, where you don't necessarily have to meet the math requirements unless you're wanting to take a math class. So your My Blend account, um, after you do your application to Blend, um, about two or three days later, you're going to get an email from Blend saying, congratulations, you've been accepted. Um, it's also going to give you your um, username and your password to your My Blend account. It's really important that you log in at least once when you first have access to this um, because the password that it gives you is gonna be a temporary password. Um, so you need to log in and change it and create your own password. Um, your MyBlend account is something that's really important though. This is where you can view your transcripts, where you can pay your bill, um, view your degree audit, any admissions forms, um, your eCampus, as well as any bookstore links. This is also where your drop form will be. So this, it's a little hard to see, but this is what it's going to look like in the student's MyBlend account. Um, as you can see, there's so many different things in here. So I really recommend just kind of going through it when you first have access, just kind of playing around, seeing where things are and what's all available on here for you. So degree audit, this is something that's available through the student's MyBlend account. Um, when a student applies to Blinn, they have to choose a major. And with every major comes certain courses that you have to take. In your degree audit, it's going to list out for you every single course that is required for your degree. Um, and as you go through and take classes, it's gonna check them off. So it's just a great way for you to be able to see your progress through your degree plan, um, what classes you've taken, what you still need to take and things like that. So the ID request form, if you do want a physical blend ID card, um, you will do that through your MyBlend account. Um, the student will submit their photo. You have to meet certain requirements, as you can see. Um, if your photo does get accepted, though, um, we will print your ID card, and then we send them to the school, um, and then your school will actually deliver those to you. So eCampus, this is also um, accessed through your MyBlend account. Ecampus is something that's super important as well because this is where the online portion of your class is going to be held. So even if your class is in person, you still may have things online and it's going to be through this eCampus. This is where you um, will view your grades, which is super important, where you may turn in assignments, have discussion boards, take tests. Um, this is also where you're going to be able to view your syllabus for your class. So it's really important to get familiarized with this. Um, I will warn you that your classes are not going to show up in eCampus until the first day of class. So don't freak out if you're going in your eCampus and you don't see any classes because um, they're not going to show up until the classes start. So Buck Books, this is something that is new starting in the fall. Um, so if you have any current dual credit students, this doesn't apply yet. Um, it'll start in the fall semester. Um, it's a new program where students will already be charged with their tuition um, for their books. Um, their books will um, already be coming to them. It's going to be at a cheaper cost than buying the book separately um, and on its own. Um, so with the Buck Books program, the student is going to receive emails from Blinn, um, and it's going to come to your Blinn email account. So it's really important that students keep an eye on this Blinn email address um, because what it's going to have you do it's gonna send multiple emails to you. And in those emails, 
you're going to select your materials. So you're going to select if you want a paper book or a hard copy book or if you want an ebook, um, and you'll select each of your class materials. Um, and then what you do is you will select your delivery method. This is what's really important. So if you want your books um, delivered to you or if you want to go and actually pick them up on a blend campus, um, it's important that you do that delivery method. So if you do, um, even if you have like ebooks, you have to get the access code. And so they'll mail that access code to you. Um, so then you'll receive your materials. A lot of times you'll have them um, received and ready before the classes start, as long as you keep track of these emails and follow through with it. Um, it's also important to note though, that any physical copies of books are considered rentals. So you do have to return them at the end of the semester. Um, so at the end of the semester, you'll either mail them back or you'll deliver them back to campus. So opt out. So if you don't wanna be included in this book books, you don't want them to charge you, you don't want the books delivered this way, um, you already have a book or you want to purchase it on your own, you can opt out of book books. Um, it's done through the bookstore website. Um, and if you want to purchase the books on your own, when you go through the bookstore website, um, you will choose the opt out as your term um, so that it knows that you're opted out of the um, book books program and it'll show you the full prices and everything of all your books. So due dates and deadlines. Um, these are some of our due dates and deadlines that we have in place for dual credit. Um, if your counselors have any earlier due dates and deadlines, so we do follow those. So I really recommend that you keep in contact with your counselors of when things need to be turned in. So these are our dual credit contacts. Um, Shannon Williford, she's the director of dual credit <sighs> programs. Jordan Scott, she's the coordinator of dual credit programs. And then I'm Shannon Wiggum, I'm the advisor. Um, you're always welcome to reach out to any of us if you have any questions. Um, if we're kind of like, I don't know who to reach out to, we have this dual credit at blend.edu email address down here. Um, and you can, you're can you welcome to email that. What's cool about that one is that it actually sends to all three of us. Um, and so then one of us will get back with you um, with your question. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Will you be sending this presentation to us to our emails? Yes, we will. Um, we recorded it. Um, and so we can send the video and we can also send just the PowerPoint of it. So there's a question in the chat about if dual credit students can take or if, yeah, dual credit high school students can take winter mini or summer classes. You can um, as far as blend is concerned, but you would have to contact your high school to see if that's if they allow that. Mm -hmm. And then they also asked once enrolled, can they take extra regular college courses, um, which you can do that as well. So if your student wants to take courses that aren't considered dual credit where they don't count towards the high school, they would be college credit only. Um, students are allowed to do that. What is y'all's recommended number of dual credit classes um, to take at one time to keep from overloading and also succeeding? I so think it's really out, up to the students for how well they can do. I normally recommend your first semester no more than two. Uh, Jordan, what do you? I would say one or two starting out. Yeah, I agree especially with so much that these high school kids have going on with their extracurriculars, their other um, classes, even we don't want them to overload with like a full class load. Anyone else? And how do we know where the dual credit classes, like if they're virtual or on campus? It depends on the high school. Um, so your high school counselor would have the best information for that. Um, some of them, if there's enough students for Blend College to send an instructor, it may be in person, but um, sometimes they're online. There's just a lot of different options. So um, the counselor usually knows the most information about that, or the student can contact our office and we can answer that for them as well.
If you don't want to say or your any... questions, you're also welcome to put it in the chat as well. And while we wait for more questions, um, Blinn College has some preview days coming up, and these are for graduating seniors, um, incoming freshmen, or even anybody who's interested in attending Blinn that has already graduated high school. Um, we have one on our Brenham, Bryan, and Seeley, and Relis campuses coming up. Um, so you can sign up using scanning that QR code. Um, if you have a student that's graduating, um, please feel free to share this information with them.